Thank you. This is working. Can you hear now? I need to turn it on. It's fine? Great. Well, to let you know, I came from plus 21 to minus 21. <laughs> It's a joy to be here and share with you what God is doing in our part of the world. We heard uh, from Stephen how this amazing unity developing with the churches, and that's exactly what we experience in our country as well. I was in the city of Calcutta a few months ago, talking to the city leaders, and I told them to imagine the roads that are coming into the city. And there are huge trees on the side. And there is a web, uh, like a spider web. And everyone who comes into the city can't escape it. I went and checked this morning in a suburb of Dallas, Texas. Thousands of spiders have formed around the trees, a huge web, and people got scared. I said, he said, no, it's no harm to human. We said, normally these spiders never come together. They are loners. But now, out of necessity, <laughs> when the people went to the park to see, most of the trees were covered with this web to get their meal. How nice would it be for the churches in our cities, the Christians in the cities, come together, form this invisible web through prayer? an invisible verb of evangelism that everyone who comes into the city can't escape it. And that's what working together can do for a city. Many years ago, we moved to New Delhi, India, the capital. A city at that time was 10 million. The Christian population was 0 0.08. There were hardly a couple of hundred churches and I recognize when God took me to that city to see the city reached, it's impossible. I was head of Campus Crusade, power to change in Canada. I said, how in the world are we going to bring the gospel to these 10 million people unless the whole body of Christ works together? So I began meeting with the Christian leaders and then we began now what's called the Delhi Transformation Network. Many years later, God pushed us back to where we came from, Chennai. Chennai is a city of 10 million, had at that time, it was 2003, 3,000 churches. And God clearly said, I want you to go back to where you came from, because to me it's more important the body of Christ works together than just going around reaching the people. Because if you can bring the whole body of Christ together, you can just do that in such a short time. So I began gathering the Christian leaders of Chennai, and what we formed later is called the Chennai Transformation Network. Well, that's become a model now for many cities in our country. I want us to watch a video very similar to Chennai's story. We have one in Mumbai. In fact, the Mumbai leaders inspired us uh, to form, now it's called Chennai Transformation Network. So they already had, by 2003, something called the Mumbai Transformation Network. I'd like us to just watch this video. It just gives us a story of God is at work in large cities of the world to take the gospel to millions of people. Mumbai, great city of 22 million people, which is a seat of entertainment, the hub of commerce and business. And in the midst of this great city, we see God's people who over the years gave of themselves to seeing unity in the body of Christ through prayer and action. The church was fragmented in Bombay. Neither was there a common vision that we should pray for the city. I had a question right from my childhood. Why do not the churches come together? Everybody used to say it is not possible. It is not possible. In 2003, there was an invitation to attend what was called a prayer summit. For over 100 people from various churches and various denominations and various organizations. And uh, through that time, barriers were broken down, relationships were healed, there was much forgiveness that took place. And then just brought forth a unity. We all began to believe transformation is possible in this city. So 
we took a decision to form a network called the Mumbai Transformation Network. After that, we began to see more and more churches, more and more individual leaders coming on board. And I think MTN sees itself as being a catalyst. Intense intercession has always been the hallmark of MTN. And there are three major activities during the year. One is a united prayer meeting, where we pray for the city, we pray for the nation. Uh, we also have a regular prayer summit. And the third is when we develop prayer for the city and for the world on the Global Day of Prayer. We had a program in the city called the Power to Change program that galvanized 1,600 churches to do an evangelistic event together. This has really brought us into a place where we can see the many-membered body coming together. In this vision for transformation, we began to see the whole area of the different spheres of society coming forth. So, sovereignly streams were formed. The social consent stream has conducted many conferences. Art stream has already conducted two conferences and invited pastors also to be a part of the conferences. Another very exciting development has been the rise of the legal cell uh, to help people from all walks of life with problems related to the trampling of the rights of individuals. And we're looking to decentralizing the strategy for the city into 18 zones. Each zone will work out a transformation itself and there will be a central team that will equip the zones to carry out the transformation. One of the mandates that has come upon MTN is to equip the other cities. We had the India City Advance Conference in February where we had 186 people from 34 cities and with two days of sharing how God is moving and principles by which we can transform the cities. The vision of MTN is that every individual in the city of Mumbai, every church in the city of Mumbai will have an opportunity to be a part of this great transformation process that is happening in the city. Our city today has a lot of problems. There are problems with sanitation, there are problems with traffic, there are problems with housing. The poor are still marginalized. Our dream is to see all that changing so that our city could be a different city. Our city could be truly the gateway that God is meant it to be. You know, God is true to His promise. When His people come together, He'll bring forth His blessings. Amen? I'd like you to go with me to Chennai now. Now, Chennai is in the down south of India, has 10 million people. For the last 15 years that I've been living there, God has been doing amazing thing of bringing the city leaders together. Like Mumbai, Chennai was very fragmented. You, know, you can imagine when you have 3,000 churches, there are 3,000 ideas. And gathering them was not an easy task. Thanks to Tom, as we saw in the video, Tom not only went to Mumbai, came to Chennai many years ago, and I would say Tom was very frustrated seeing the disunity. But thank God what we see today is something very different. And let's watch the video about Chennai. I know I'm taking you through videos, and I think it'll probably stay in your mind better than what I said. So let's watch the Chennai one, then I'll share a few thoughts. This is Chennai, Namba Chennai, the birthplace of a million dreams to those who live here. It isn't just a city, it's home. Founded along the beaches of the Coromandel coast, this land has stood the test of time and out of the melting pot of different cultures and rulers over the years, each leaving their mark on this piece of earth, has emerged this vibrant city. Home to over 10 million people, it is the fourth largest metropolis in India. Rich in the arts, commerce and science, the city offers a truly multicultural experience and has been ranked the ninth best cosmopolitan city in the world. 
the Chennai metropolitan area has witnessed tremendous growth over the last four decades and has a GDP of over $210 billion. It is a beacon of hope, creating 3.3 lakh jobs each year. But this comes at a cost. Growing economic inequality has left over 11,000 homeless and the destitute lay forgotten on our streets. Educated unemployment is on the rise along with a new breed of lifestyle-induced problems. The city has 92 drug dealers, the maximum number of suicides in India second highest fatal road accidents in the world and has witnessed a drastic increase of violent crime. Our city faces challenges like never before. The only answer, Jesus. It is with this vision that the Chennai Transformation Network strives to mobilize the whole church, that's church leaders, marketplace leaders and NGO leaders to bring the whole gospel, both spiritual and social, to the whole city, irrespective of caste, creed or economic status. Founded in 1996, CTN is an interdenominational, intergenerational network of Christians that work to make this vision a reality by fostering unity among the leaders of the church marketplace and NGOs, taking on the unaddressed issues across various sections in our city and utilizing untapped resources by being a bridge that connects resources with needs while facilitating cooperation and collaboration. It all comes down to this. Chennai needs Jesus and we are the ones he has chosen to take his love into the streets and towers that line our city. This movement day, one question remains. As you can see, this video was made for our movement day we had in 2017. Why did we have movement day? We recognize as the churches are growing in the city, now we have 6,000 churches for this 10 million people city. But we recognize 6,000 is not enough because we have 42,000 streets in our city. But just imagine if each street could have a church, what the city would look like. It's a very long dream. So we gathered the city leaders, close to 1,000 for a day like this, and we just addressed some of the unaddressed issues. We focused on the issue of the millennials, the marginalized, the marketplace, the movements of churches, and see if our leaders would catch the vision to take the gospel to the whole city. Now, CTN is now divided in subgroups, like we have a group that focuses primarily on the marketplace, the business leaders, primarily another group focuses on the children. Now, the children's ministry track is very interesting. For more than the last 10 years, they gather every month regularly. There's 35 distinct uh, groups coming together regularly for half a day of prayer and interaction and share resources. They formed a website called Match7, where all the leaders will put together their resources and everybody can share. And so the story continues on. Now, why are we talking about working together to have a better city? When Christians come together, multi-generational, from various different uh, background, they can begin to think long. They can think of what God would do in their city in the next 25, 30, or 40 years. Because the cities are growing at such rapid speed, we're not able to catch up with the growth unless we could think long. The second, I believe that if Christian leaders, churches, organizations, non-profit, the NGO, I think you recognize it's non-government organizations, Christian organizations involved in social transformation, they could really think deep. There are hundreds of issues in the city. Now, one church, one organization, one ministry, one non-profit organization cannot address all of them. But together, they can think really deep, the deep issues of the city. 
We are homeless people. We saw 11,000. Our church took it up and said, well, we want to do something for the people. World Vision came along and said, well, you got a good start. Let's take it over. Let's work together with you. Now, the World Vision and our city work together with the churches. And so when we identify, we can go think deeper into every small issue in the city, and we can address all of them. And we can also think much bigger. I was leading the Ministry of Campus Crusade in North India. I was responsible to take the gospel to 300 million people. How in the world that could happen with one ministry? And we gathered the leaders of entire North India and said, we have a wonderful resource. Can we work together? In the next 10 years, we dubbed the Jesus film in 100 new languages. How can we do it alone? One ministry, one church. How can we take these big challenges alone unless we work together? So we need to think long. We need to think big. We need to think deep. And it's only possible if God's people in the cities come together. Now, today, my challenge, I work also with the Movement Day uh, global team. Our challenge for India is reaching 500 cities. How are we going to do that with 500 cities and our population? Richard is now 1.3 billion, not just 1 billion. The population growth, the city growth is so enormous unless the whole body of Christ comes together on their knees and asking God to lead them in his direction. And that's what we are dreaming of. In the next few years, we want to see 100 Movement Day expressions in our country. We have one in Mumbai coming next month, one in Chennai coming up in August, one in Calcutta, God willing, in the month of November. Just three. But we are dreaming that together, if God's people come together and pray and work together, we could see all the 500 cities being reached and the gospel would be taken to every person in every city in our country. So friends, we need to work together. One of our senior leaders in our city made this very interesting um, comment, and it's a story from his own church. He said one of his church leaders worked in a hospital in Chennai. So this pastor friend of ours asked him, okay, what is your work? Well, my work is to take food to the people inside this huge cafeteria where people come to eat. He said, what kind of people are they? Oh, they are people who are mentally challenged. He said, oh, are you not afraid to take food to this big group of mentally challenged people? He said, I'm not. He said, why? The mentally challenged people never come together to attack you. You know, God's people, are they coming together? If they're not coming together, there's something wrong. What is that that is wrong, that we are not coming together? So let's work together. You know, bring the whole body of Christ in our city to change the whole city. We can think long, we can think big, we can think deep. Thank you.